So should you consider buying an investment property in Myrtle Beach? Let's discuss the pros and cons of it today. What's happening guys, it's Jeremy Blanton with Remax Southern Shores and today we're going to discuss the pros and cons of buying an investment property here in the Myrtle Beach area. You know, we've now come into that time of year where we're in off season, which means a lot of the investment properties are slowly starting to come to market. Also, buyers are starting to come out of the woodwork wanting to pick up these properties because they think now that we've hit off season that they're going to be able to save a lot of money and pick up these properties for a big deal and steal. And here's the reality. That's not happening. Inventory still in Myrtle Beach is extremely low, making any and all types of properties extremely competitive. I had an investment property I listed just the other week. I put it on the marker for 210,000. I had two offers in my hand in less than an hour of putting it on the market, both of them buying the property sight unseen for full price and above. So is the interest in investment properties still strong? Are people still buying them? Most definitely. So let's jump into this a little bit more today and discuss some of the pros and cons of buying an investment property here in the area. So I'm hoping today that I can dispel some of the myths and rumors that revolve around buying an investment property, whether you're looking to do something for an Airbnb, a Verbo, or VRBO as I always knew it, or you're looking to do something long-term, short-term, we're gonna discuss a lot of these pros and cons today. But before we jump into some of these, let's first discuss what is gonna be the main use of this property. Is it something that you're buying strictly as an investment? Where you're buying it, you're not gonna use the property, or is it something that you wanna use mixed? Meaning, you're gonna come stay in the property maybe two, three times a year, and when you're not here, try to rent it out to help pay and support the expenses of owning this property. If the answer is the second one, then it limits what we can do. If the answer is the first one where you're just buying it for investment and you don't mind if you're rented for 12 months, then the sky is the limit. We're basically open to a full market you can find just about anything and everything to fit your financial needs. I had clients that were in town this past week and that was his goal. He wanted to buy a property. He's not gonna live in it. He actually lives in California. So he's not gonna come and use it. He's buying it just because he knows real estate is a good thing to invest in. You know, over the last seven years here in the Myrtle Beach area, our market has seen an average increase of anywhere from seven to 10% each and every year. That is pretty good way to grow your income and build wealth each and every year. It's definitely less riskier than things like cryptocurrency or the stock market or some of the other things out there that people try to get you to invest in. Historically, real estate has always been a wise investment and a good way to invest your money and save up in the long run while making more each and every year. Okay, so now that we've determined how you're gonna use the property, let's discuss this a little more. If short-term rentals is something that you have as a plan, then it's going to limit the type of properties that we have available to us. This is limited by several different factors. The first one is homeowners associations. If it's a single family home, you're not gonna be able to do weekly rentals in most of these neighborhoods. Instead, they're going to require you to rent the property either as a six month or minimum 12 month lease to someone who's going to move in and live there. Why is that? These neighborhoods do not want to have transient tourists in and out of them all the time. So they put those restrictions in place. But even in areas that don't have a homeowners association, there might be a restriction that prevents you from weekly rentals. For example, down inside Myrtle Beach city limits, a lot of people think, hey, I can go buy some of these houses along the Grand Strand right there in the Golden Mile and I can turn them into great rental properties. But here's the reality. Unless the property is grandfathered in as one that has been used for weekly rentals in the past, they are no longer allowed to be used for. Why? The city has put limitations in because they want to build people living there, residences year round versus just another tourist spot. So that's the first part that we need to look at is if you're wanting to do weekly rentals, where can we actually find your property that's going to fit those needs? The second thing that we have to then discuss is how are we going to pay for this property? If we're planning to buy the property and pay cash, then hey, 
we're free to do as we wish. However, if we're gonna be doing financing for the property, that could greatly limit what we can do and also how we can purchase the property. There are different restrictions that are in place when buying investment properties to help prevent us from having another crash in the market like we did back in 2007 and 2008. Back then, people were buying properties and trading them almost like trading cards each and every week. I'd buy this today, sell it next week, buy this one, sell it, buy and sell. And there was so much that was happening and there was not really a lot of regulation in place. So the lenders have tightened things up now, brought in new guidelines to help prevent people from just doing the flipping of properties. But in addition to that, what it has really done, it has made it more difficult for you to purchase. First off, your interest rate's gonna be a little bit higher. So for example, you may be able to get a primary rate today under 3%. An investment property though is gonna be probably about three and a quarter to three and a half today. And we're talking September 2021 rates. Down the road, who knows what those will be, but you can always reach out to me and I can give you what they are nowadays if you're watching this in the future. One of the nice things though that you can do if you're buying that investment property is sometimes you can use the income rental that it's going to generate to help pay for it and help you to qualify for a higher property. My gentleman that just bought another investment property from me this last week, he's putting a big chunk of money down, but then he's gonna have the property rent for about $2,000 a month. His rental is gonna be bringing in more than what his mortgage is gonna be, and basically the property is gonna pay for itself, and it's gonna be a nice positive cash flow for him after putting down his down payment. Now let's unpack next if we're doing an investment property and we're gonna be doing weekly rentals with financing. This is a completely different animal and a totally different beast from the other type of investment properties. When you're doing these, first off, you can't do your typical financing. That means you can't go and put your typical 5% down like a normal standard loan. You also can't do the standard second home, which is 10% down. Instead, if the property is having weekly rentals, you're gonna to have to go to a specialty loan financing program where you may have 20 or 25% that's going to be required. In addition, your interest rates are gonna be a little bit higher and you're more than likely not gonna get a 30 year fixed rate. Instead, you're probably looking at a 15 or 20 year fixed or maybe some sort of an arm type of financing, which means you have a rate here and it could slowly go up after a few years. These things have greatest risk to the lenders, and so therefore they're putting the greater risk into your pocket when you're using their loans to buy them. Ultimately, at the end of the day, if you're buying investment properties, cash is the best way to go because it gives you the ultimate flexibility. But if you're like me, you don't have a couple extra hundred thousand dollars laying around and it's okay. You can still build that wealth while using loan programs that are out there. Another thing that could cause a restriction on buying a property that you're using for weekly rentals is the size of the unit. If you're buying a condo down at the beach, it has to either be a certain square footage or at least have one true full bedroom in it in order to buy. So all of those places that are great efficiency units that are bringing in lots of revenue, you can't go and buy those unless you have cash or go to a bank and take out a small loan, not a normal mortgage. So when it comes to financing, there's a lot of different quirky things that are out there. Ultimately, what I would suggest is reach out to me. Let me get you in touch with a specialty finance person that can help you on those loans and get you down the right track. The next part that you need to take into consideration when buying that investment property is the rental management fees. So if you look at some properties online, they may say amazing rental income, $50,000 GRI or gross rental income for the year. But what they don't take into account is that there's a rental management fee that's going to come out of that. If you're buying a property and using it on an annual basis with a long-term rental management company, you're looking at probably a 10 to 12% management fee each and every month. So if you have a $2,000 mortgage, you're gonna be taking $200 of that out of every single month's payment and giving that to the management fee. Now, why would you wanna have that management company? Because they're gonna handle everything on the property. If the water heater breaks at 2 a.m., 
that tenant's not calling you directly and you have to figure out how to fix it from New York down here 700 miles away. Instead, they're reaching out to the rental management company. They're gonna hire the plumber, get them out there, get the repairs done, and they take care of all of it for you. In addition, they're going to do the advertising needed to find a tenant for your property. They're going to management. If for some reason the person doesn't pay, they will handle all of the eviction notice and all that nasty, messy stuff so you don't have to do it. Instead, you basically collect a check every month. They handle everything for you. Now, if you're talking about short-term rentals, it's a completely different ballgame. When you get into those, you could easily expect to pay anywhere from 30 to 50% of whatever income comes in. So if that property is bringing in $50,000 a year, you really should only expect about having half of that, $25,000, to use to pay your mortgage, your taxes, and your HOA fees. And we're gonna talk more about HOA fees in just a minute. But these are the taxes and the fees that you need to take into consideration when buying this to really figure out, is this a truly wise investment to do? Speaking of taxes, taxes on an investment property are also going to be much higher than if it's your primary residence. I've talked about taxes a lot in the past and how to get your taxes lower. But unfortunately, when it comes to the investment properties, there's no way to get around it. You're gonna have to pay the bills. They're gonna come in, they're gonna be higher. On average, taxes on an investment property are about three times the amount of someone who owns it as a primary residence. In addition, you're also gonna have a tax each and every year on the furnitures and fixtures in the property. And that could be anywhere from an additional 50 to $1,000 a year of taxes that you're gonna to have to pay for all the furnishings inside the property. So these are other things you need to take into account. Next, let's talk about homeowners association fees. So if you're buying a condo and you're buying one down at the beach, you should expect for your HOA fee to be as much, if not more, than your mortgage payment. Let's talk about it this way a minute. Say that you buy a home and you have a $100,000 mortgage on it. You're looking at your monthly mortgage payment to be right around probably the five to $600 a month payment. Now, in comparison, your HOA fee for that two bedroom oceanfront condo could easily be anywhere from $800 to $1,100, $1,200 a month for it. So you could have more payment in that for your HOA than what you do in the actual mortgage. So when you're figuring out your numbers and with this is a vault and whether this is a wise investment or not, you need to take the mortgage, you need to take the homeowner's fee and the taxes and put it all in to figure out here's what it's gonna cost me per month. Now, we also need to look and see what other expenses might be involved. Luckily, most of those homeowners association on the beach are going to include electric, so everything's pretty much included, but some of them don't. And so you need to take that into account or some of the ones that you may find that say, hey, our HOA is only $500 a month, they're not collecting for insurance. And when they don't, they hit you then with a quarterly assessment, which could easily be another four to $500 or another one to $200 a month in addition on payments. So make sure that we take time to look at all the numbers and truly understand what all is involved in those payments each and every month. So now that I kind of talked about a lot of the negatives of buying an investment property here at the beach, let's talk about some of the pros. The first one, like I mentioned earlier, you're building constant equity in the home. Over the last several years, our average market increase here has been seven to 10% each and every year. So when you buy that property today and hold on to it for five to 10 years, you're building equity each and every year as the property value continues to go up. The second thing that you can do to really help build is buying property is one of the fastest ways to build wealth. So if you can get one, two, three, four properties here at the beach that are investment, that are helping to pay for themselves through the rental income that it brings in, it's something where you can build that equity each and every year and build yourself wealth over time exponentially. So real estate and investing is one of the greatest ways to build that wealth. So hopefully you guys got a lot out of today's video on some of the good and bad of buying an investment property here at Myrtle Beach. If you're thinking about buying a home, whether you're wanting to do it with a rental management, Airbnb, Verbo, whatever it may be, feel free to reach out to me. My contact info is down below here. And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up, get that bell on, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.